Hi, these are the trigonometry lectures on educator.com and today we're going to talk about polar form of complex numbers. Now a lot of what we're learning in this lecture is very directly related to polar coordinates. So if you're a little rusty on polar coordinates, what you might want to do is go back and review what you learned about polar coordinates before we learn about polar forms of complex numbers. In particular, the main formulas for converting a complex number into polar form they're exactly the same formulas that you learned for polar coordinates. So they should be familiar to you when we go through them now. If they're very rusty, you might want to go back and practice those formulas for converting a point into polar coordinates and back, because they'll be really helpful in this section on polar forms of complex numbers. So let's start out there. Um, complex numbers can be written in rectangular form. z equals x plus yi. That represents, if you graph it, then you have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So we write the rectangular form of the complex number as x plus yi. Just like with points, you would, graph, you would give the coordinates as x, y. Now with complex numbers, we give the, the form as x plus yi. They can also be written in polar form z equals r e to the i theta. And that represents the polar coordinates of the same point. So r e to the i theta. Or sometimes people write it as r e to the theta i. And that represents the polar coordinates of the point. So remember, r is the radius from the origin going diagonally instead of going in a rectangular fashion. Um, and theta represents the angle it makes with the positive x-axis. So just like we had polar coordinates, r theta, we'll have the polar form of a complex number, r e to the i theta. And the conversions back and forth between those two forms are exactly the same as what we had for polar coordinates. So, so let's check those out. The conversion for r is square root of x squared plus y squared. That comes straight from the Pythagorean theorem. The conversion for theta is a little more complicated. And it's, it's got the same kind of subtleties and nuances that it had with polar coordinates. Theta is either arctangent of y over x or pi plus arctangent of y over x. And the way you know which one of these formulas to use is you check the sine of x. So this is when x is greater than 0, and this is when x is less than 0. Another way to, to remember that is to ask whether the number is in, the point is in quadrant 1, 2, 3, or 4. Remember, arctangent will always give you a value in quadrants 1 or 4. So if you start out in quadrant 1 or 4, then you just want to use the arctangent function directly, 1 or 4. But if you're looking for a point in quadrants 2 or 3, then the arctangent will not give you the right value. So that's why you add pi to it. So this is quadrants 2 and 3. So that's the tricky one. Um, x and y, same formulas as we had for polar coordinates before, r cosine theta and r sine theta. And again, we try to use values of r that are positive, but that's not absolutely essential. And we try to use values of theta that are between 0 and 2 pi, but that's not absolutely essential. Let me give you one more formula that's very, very useful in, in working out uh, conversions between rectangular and polar coordinates. Um, we write r e to the i theta as x plus y i. I'll write that as i y. So remember, polar form is r e to the i theta. And rectangular form is x plus i y. But if you convert that, remember the x is r cosine theta. And iy 
is I R sine theta. And if you factor out an R there, we get R times cosine theta plus I sine theta. And so if you just take R equals 1, or if you, fact, if you factor out the R from both sides, what you get here is that E to the I theta is equal to cosine theta plus I sine theta. Now that is an extremely useful formula in converting complex numbers to polar coordinates. So that one is probably worth memorizing as well. E to the I theta is equal to cosine theta plus I sine theta. Let me decorate that a little bit to illustrate how important it is. E to the I theta is equal to cosine theta plus I sine theta. That's definitely worth remembering. We'll be using it on some of the examples. So let's go ahead and practice uh, doing some conversions here. Um, oh, there's one more thing I need to show you before we practice that. Uh, multiplying two complex numbers in polar form. If we have two complex numbers in polar form, r1 times e to the i theta 1, so it's got an r and a theta, and r2 times e to the i theta 2, um, there's a very easy way to multiply them. So if we multiply these together, what we do is we just multiply the r's together, r1 times r2. Now remember the laws of exponents. x to the a times x to the b is equal to x to the a plus b. So here we have x or e to the i theta 1 times e to the i theta 2. So you add the exponents, and so i theta 1 plus i theta 2 just gives you i times theta 1 plus theta 2. So you add the exponents there. So you end up just multiplying the r's and adding the angles, theta 1 plus theta 2, because they're in the exponents. So now let's try some examples. We're going to convert the following complex numbers from rectangular form to polar form. So let's start out with negative 3 plus i. Um, the negative 3 is x, and y is 1 there. And so we want to find the r and the theta. r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Let me write this at the top of the page so I don't have to keep rewriting it. x squared plus y squared. And theta is equal to arctan y over x. That's if x is greater than 0. Or we might have to add pi to that if x is less than 0. So in this case, our r is the square root of x squared, negative root 3 squared is just 3, plus y squared is 1. That simplifies down to 2. And theta is arctangent of y over x. y is 1, so 1 over negative root 3 which is arctan of negative root 3 over 3. That's one of my common values. I know what the arctangent of negative root 3 over 3 is. It's negative pi over 6. Now, my x coordinate was negative there, so I haven't actually been using the right formula. I have to add pi to each of these, plus pi plus pi. You almost always use radians and not degrees here. So if you do happen to plug this into your calculator, make sure your calculator is in radian mode. I didn't have to use my calculator on this one because negative root 3 over 3 is a common value. So negative pi over 6 it plus pi is 5 pi over 6. And so my polar form for that complex number is r. 2 e to the i theta, so e to the 5 pi over 6 i. Okay, let's keep going with the next one. 6 root 2, that's my x, and minus 6 root 2, that's my y. 
So r is the square root of x squared. 6 root 2 squared is 36 times 2 is 72. Um, plus y squared is 6 root 2 again, 72. The square root of 144 is 12. Theta is arctan of y over x. That's negative 6 root 2 over 6 root 2, which is arctan of negative 1, which is negative pi over 4. My, my x in this case was positive, so I don't have to introduce that correction term. Um, so I get w is equal to r e to the i theta, 12 e to the negative pi over 4. Now, I don't really like that negative value of pi over 4. So what I'm going to do is to make it positive. To get it into the range 0 to 2 pi, I'll add 2 pi to it. So I'll write that as 12 e, and I need an i there, e to the 7 pi over 4 i. You can also understand these things graphically. Let me draw a unit circle here. Negative root 3 plus i, um, that means my x is negative root 3 and my y is i, or y is 1. So I recognize that as a multiple of root 3 over 2 and negative 1. I recognize that as being over here. So that's z with a radius of 2 because it's 2 times root 3 over 2 and 1 half. Um, and I know that that's 5 pi over 6. So that's a way to kind of check graphically that my z is 2 times e to the 5 pi over 6 i. Uh, for w, 6 root 2 minus 6 root 2, I know that's 12 times, oops, 12 times root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, except the y is negative. And so that value is 7 pi over 4. So that's kind of a little graphical check that we actually have the right polar form for the complex numbers. Um, let's go back and recap what we did for that problem. We're converting complex numbers from rectangular form to polar form. Really just boils down to these two conversion formulas for r and theta. R gives you the magnitude, theta gives you the angle. Uh, the problem, though, is that this theta formula is a little bit tricky. It has these two cases depending on whether x is positive or negative. And if x is negative, then you have to add an extra pi to it. And so that's what we did here. We were adding an extra pi to the value of theta. And then once you find r and theta, you just plug them into this form, r e to the i theta. So that's how we got the answers for each of those. For the next one, we're converting from polar form to rectangular form. So we're given z equals 4 e to the negative 2 pi over 3i, uh, and w equals 2 e to the 3 pi over 4i. Let me write down the conversion formulas. Uh, x is equal to r cosine theta. y is equal to r sine theta. So for the first one, x is equal to the r is 4 cosine of negative 2 pi over 3. Now let me graph that quickly on a unit circle. Negative 2 pi over 3 is down here. It's the same as 4 pi over 3. So the cosine is negative 1 half. That's a common value. So this is 4 times negative 1 half which is negative 2. So the y there is 4 
sine of two, negative 2 pi over 3. And the sine of that is negative root 3 over 2. So this is 4 times negative root 3 over 2, which is minus 4 root, or minus 2 root 3. And so remember, we're, we're going for the form x plus yi. So our z is equal to x, negative 2, plus yi, minus 2 root 3 i. Now for the second one, we have 2 e to the 3 pi over 4 i. Again, I'll graph that on a unit circle to help me find the sine and cosine. 3 pi over 4 is over there. It's a 45 degree angle on the left hand side. I know the sine and cosine very quickly. X is equal to R, which is 2, uh, cosine of 3 pi over 4, which is 2. Cosine of that is negative because it's on the left hand side. So 2 times negative root 2 over 2, which is just negative root 2. y is 2 sine of 3 pi over 4, which is 2 times positive root 2 over 2, because we're in that second quadrant, the y coordinate's positive. So root 2. And so x plus y i is negative root 2 plus root 2 i. So that one wasn't too bad. It was simply a matter of remembering x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, and then putting those into x plus y i. And of course, for finding the sines and cosines, it helps if you graph the angle in each case. Once you remember those formulas, you're just working through r cosine theta and r sine theta in each case. So for the third example, we're going to use polar form in an application. We're going to perform a multiplication by converting each one of the complex numbers to polar form. And then we're going to check the answer by multiplying them directly in rectangular form. So negative 1 plus root 3i. So I'm going to figure out my r there. My r is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. Let me write these formulas generically. x squared plus y squared. Theta is equal to arctan of y over x. That's if x is bigger than 0. And we'll have to add on a pi, the fudge factor pi, if x is less than 0. So in the first one, r is equal to 1 squared uh, plus root 3 squared. So that's 3, which is 2. Uh, square root of 1 plus 3. Theta is equal to arctan of negative root 3 over 1. Let me write that as root 3 over negative 1. Now I have to add on a pi because the x is negative. Arctan of negative root 3 is negative pi over 3 plus pi. That was a common value that I remembered there. So plus pi gives me 2 pi over 3. So that tells me my r and my theta for the first one. Let me go ahead and figure them out for the second one before I plug them in. For the second one, we have r is equal to the square root of 2 root 3 squared. 2 root 3 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. Plus 2 squared is 4. So 12 plus 4 is 16. That gives me root 16 is 4. Now theta is arctan. y over x is 2 over 2 root 3. Ah, but the x coordinate was negative, so again I have to add a pi. So this is arctan 
1 over root 3 is root 3 over 3 plus pi. Now again, that's a common value. So arctan of root 3 over 3, I remember that's a common value. That's pi over 6 plus pi is 7 pi over 6. So if I convert one of each one of these numbers into polar form, this one is 2e to the 2 pi over 3i. And this one is 4e to the 7 pi over 6i. Now, I want to multiply those. But remember, multiplying numbers in polar form is very easy. First, you multiply one radius by the other one. So that's 2 times 4 is 8. And then you add the angles, e to the 2 pi over 3 plus 7 pi over 6 i. So you just add the angles. You multiply the, the radius by the other one, and then you add the angles. So that's 8 e to the, let's see, 2 pi over 3 is 4 pi over 6. So we get 11 pi over 6 i. Now I want to convert that into, uh, back into rectangular form. Oops, I forgot to put my e in there. And I'm going to use this formula, e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. That one's really useful. It's definitely worth remembering. So this is 8 cosine 11 pi over 6 plus i sine 11 pi over 6. You could also use x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. You'll end up with the same formula at the end. So either way works. Let me draw a little unit circle to remind me where 11 pi over 6 is. 11 pi over 6 is just short of 2 pi. It's right there. So it's a 30, 30 degree angle south of the x-axis. And the cosine there is root 3 over 2. It's positive because we're on the right-hand side. Whoops, root 3 over 2. And the sine is negative 1 half. And so what we get there, that simplifies down to 4 root 3 um, minus 4i. And so now we've done it. We converted each number into polar form. We multiplied them in polar form, which is very easy. And then we converted the polar form back into rectangular form to give us our answer. It says we have to check our answer by multiplying them directly in rectangular form. So let's do the check here. We'll FOIL the multiplication out. So I'll do the check over here. I'll do the check in blue. Um, FOILing it out, my first terms give me negative 1 times 2 root 3. So that's 2 root 3, positive 2 root 3. My outer terms give me negative 1 minus 2i, so plus 2i. My inner terms give me minus 2 times root 3 times root 3, so that's 6i. Those are my inner terms. I'm doing FOIL here. First, outer, inner. And my last terms are root 3i minus 2i, so that's minus 2 root 3 i squared. But remember, i squared is negative 1, so this counts as plus 2 root 3. And if we simplify that down, we get 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3, 4 root 3, plus 2i minus 6i is minus 4i. And that does indeed check with the answer we got by converting into polar form. So that was kind of a long one. Let's recap what we did there. We had these two complex numbers. We wanted to convert each one into polar form. So for each one, I found my r, and I used x square root of x squared plus y squared. I found my theta using arc tangent of y over x, although in each one, the 
x's were less than zero, so I had to add on this fudge factor of plus pi to get me into the right quadrant. So I found my r, my theta, another r, my, my other theta. So I converted the, each one into r e to the i theta form. To multiply them together, you multiply the r's, but then you add the thetas because they're up in the exponents. That's the law of exponents there. So we added the, the thetas. We got a simplified polar form. And then we converted back into rectangular form using e to the i theta is equal to i cosine theta plus i sine theta. You could also use x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. You'll get to exactly the same place. I know my cosine and sine of 11 pi over 6. That's a common value. And so I get the answer there. And then to check it, I skipped all the polar forms. I just multiplied everything out using FOIL, simplified it down, and it did indeed check with the answer that I got from using the polar forms. So we'll try some more examples later. You should try them on your own first, and then we'll work on them together.